What's up, timekeepers? Me, Tom Gamer here, bringing the next part of Kona. So if you're ready, I'm ready to to roll the intro. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to drop right back into Kona. Uh, so I'm enjoying the game so far. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying it a lot. I'm really extremely like enjoying it a lot. So without further ado, uh, there's one thing. So we'll just start the game and I'll, I'll keep talking once we're there. So we're back into the old man's house. Uh, what we're going to do is one thing I noticed when I was editing the video is I forgot um, when I was coming over here. I forgot these two houses. You have a uh, house there, right? Yeah, I forgot uh, La Chance house, Bedard and Roy. I forgot, I forgot all of that. So I'm gonna have to go back. I think La Chance General Store. I think it's the same place. So uh, the Bedard and Roy. I forgot to go there. So we'll go there right now. So uh, yeah, let's go. After that, after that, I gotta go to. Um, I can, since I got a quote from the old man here, uh, I can. Uh, I can, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, since I got the coat, I can go to, uh, I got, there's, uh, uh, caves, uh, caverns or whatever. Ice cave. And then there's a uh, cave right here. I can, I can go there after, but right now I'm going to go see those houses because I haven't done those houses yet. So let's go put this away. Can I, oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't. Oh my god, that's cool. So I thought I I, I left this at the uh, the garage uh, at the uh, uh, Lamutz garage or whatever the hell that name the the guy's name was. But we'll take the truck, we'll leave it there, and then when we'll go to the caves, we'll go uh, we'll we'll take the uh, the ski to go there after. So uh, I'll meet you at the Bedar, Bedar's place, Bedar's place. Okay, one thing I did notice uh, actually while I was. Uh, driving down that this is actually is a place uh, La Chance house I didn't even go to that place so all these three houses I need to do so we'll do that and uh, the cave will do it after and I forgot to check the mailboxes at the other places uh, to Mr. Gilles La Chance in Southern Manistan dear Mr. La Chance uh, we have carefully taken note of your complaint regarding the collapse of a nature cave on your property however given the absence of any actual damage or injury we cannot move forward with this investigation the natural cave cannot be considered personal belonging. Furthermore, you claim regarding the landslide caused by the work in the new DW Inc. Mine seems outlandish. At the mine is miles away from the property. Also, it is imperative that you secure your property as you would be held accountable for any injuries caused by the steep terrain. This is where Crying Wolf leads, leads you. Sincerely, Pierre, v uh, Pierre Valjean, Register Sûreté du Québec. All right. Sûreté, Sûreté du Québec is sort of our uh, provincial police here, so... Or state police, if you're from the state. Alright, so we're at uh, La Chance... La Chance's property. There seems to be a fire burn... Oh, the, the arrow. The hunter's arrow, or whatever. Right until that point, Carl had believed that the object of this crossbow hunting had been a ravenous wolf who was terrorizing the village. But as he noticed the height at which the bolts had been fired, he concluded that the beast had to have been as tall as a man on his feet, not right. unlike a gorilla. The thought was chilling. Alright, so there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, power line, house. Nothing in the garbage can. Alright. Bonjour, Monsieur Lachance. The there we go. It was freezing right down to the bone. It resembles a lot like the other houses in the neighborhood. Looks like the holes in that puzzle are there to stay. Yeah, uh, apparently if he's uh, frozen like that. Yeah, the houses are uh, resemble. I saw the frozen guy, don't worry. I will go see the frozen guy. I just want to go see... Uh, we know it's been going on. This is our third frozen gentleman or lady. So we're just... Uh, nothing new, so we're just going to explore here. Pick up stuff that we need. Ratchet would have been useful for something. Uh, I need a log. I always need... Oh, there... Thank God. Alright. It's getting warmer in here. The pot was cold. And the stew inside wasn't cooked. Mm, that's not good. It's likely that poor Giselle was slow cooking it before she got snacks. What a waste. All 
right? So, so this clearly will start a story, but we'll wait a couple minutes here. Uh, I have yet to find a clock that works. All right, so. Article about the store. Chez La Charles has changed the general hand. store, along with several more infrastructures in the area, had been acquired by wealthy industrialist William J. Hamilton. Perhaps the village should be rechristened Hamiltown. All right, Chez La Chance uh, changes hand. Founded by Bertrand La Chance more than 20 years ago, the general store, better known as Chez La Chance, is one of Manastan's economics mainstay since the passing of its age owner, however. Business wasn't as blooming as it once was. Gilles Lachance, inheritor of the humble establishment, has no choice but to sell everything to William Hamilton, the rich and famous businessman who sparked major crowd of controversy last year when he announced that re reopening and inspection of his copper mine. As of now, operator operations of the General Store are expected to remain unchanged despite the change of hands. Gilles Lachance still helms the register. All right. So that's something. Ooh, record oh, player. Moving. What a pleasant activity. Of course, you'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. Okay, thank you for the radio. But the house have a general um, what a mess. Yeah, Clearly, there was some major revamping work underway here. The place looked barely habitable. Alright. A box full of her Harlequin novel. All right, what is this? Uh... Beautiful portrait of Gilles and Giselle, bound together by the chains of conventional love. All right. What's in here? Cigarettes, not very useful. Oh, uh, no, let's keep it on. I'm afraid of dark. Okay. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. Okay. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. Makes sense. I was wondering what the hell that was. I was like, uh, that wasn't here before. Ooh, more Oh, no. Ooh, a ranger hat. More Polaroids. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training it's to quickly figure again. that the Lachances had just moved in. All right, open up the light here. Oh, okay. Bertrand, Bertrand Lachance, 1940. Oh, there's another door to open here. Dominoes. Boxes. Okay, so I saw that. Just another room. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll go see the little frozen lady, I guess. Okay. Ooh, painkillers. Always good. Okay, that didn't give me anything. Oh. The unpacked box suggests they moved here. They just moved here. Yeah, we got that from uh, painting. Looks like they were repainting the whole house. Makes sense. Plunger, I don't think that's going to be useful for adventure. Okay, that's good. Alright, now we can go check this, uh, this frozen... The this otherworldly ice had struck again. The woman's hopes and dreams were frozen in eternity. Okay, this is Giselle. Let's see what happens here. Carl felt a cool, tingling sensation in his back. Another vision took over him. Okay. Oh, he's got a secret door! Something was hidden under the stairs. Wait, didn't I pick up a uh, combination earlier? Okay, there The man grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. Okay. Going back down. Okay. Perhaps their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. 
Okay. Open up this door here. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace Ooh. in this house. Yeah, no kidding. All right, all right. The vision's veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. All right. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. Mm-hmm. All right, September. Mother once told me when I first met Jill that I hadn't picked the brightest bulb in, of the lot. And as years fly by, I'm uh, seeing the truth of her words. Always tr tr trust your mother's wisdom. Uh, that blackmailing scheme is a prime example of Jill's brightness. He's like a small dog. He thinks he's bigger than he actually is. He growls genuinely, thinking he's scary, but everyone knows he can be pushed aside with just a little kick. He truly believes he can blackmail Hamilton, the big boss himself. It's going to be a long time in hell before my poor Jill can manage to pull off such a feat. After all, Hamilton's a rich, learned, influential man. Uh, not only is the blackmailing idea be bad to begin with, let's be honest, Jill is way out of his league, but Jill doesn't even know know how he's actually going to carry this out. I don't even think he's ever he ever would. He's just throwing random threats out like in the kitchen, lo out loud in the kitchen. Said he'll do it eventually, but I know it, I know better. The sex successful blackmailing requires masterful cunning, and Jill is master of nothing. He is a slave and for forever will be. I often look at him safe. I often look at that that safe he keeps hidden in the fake wall in which he stores all these incriminating documents he intend intends to use. I just can't come to grip grips when the sheer ridiculousness of the whole thing. Okay. Is it it is true that Hamlet would still have to figure out the combination to the safe where everything is hidden. Only problem is Jill himself tends to forget the combination. Had the trick help him remember. His father's first initial, followed by three numbers I had to engrave behind his pendant. Who could possibly have a hard time remembering three simple numbers but but my Jill. October Jill has trouble sleeping. He will flail his arms and legs in his sleep. I told him his blackmail business would be hard on him, but that's the problem with idiots. They always think they're the smartest person around no matter how hard you try to shake them. Hamilton will find out and then we're done for. We'll have to move to Val d'Or and live with the small fry. Uh, I'm shaking as I'm writing this. I cannot believe I have taken part of this tragedy. I haven't done anything. Why do I feel so guilty? Poor girl, she was so young. That's the last page of it. Alright. Alright, so, I think I picked up the combination a bit earlier. So let's go see this. Alright. Carl had seen that kind of safe before. With its double-layered security system blending letters and numbers, its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. Alright, so I have the book here. Nope, I gotta go here. Nope. I'll get it, don't worry. Oh, I got it. Uh, the strange vision had me got it near the puzzling my mystery brain number in gray with a number in seven seven. Three, nine. Oh, I got it. Okay, so B for Bernard, and then seven, three, nine. Makes sense. Ah, oh, moving. What a pleasant activity. Oh, that's not. Of course, you'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. Compromising files, compromising documents. William Hamilton is a crook. He has been blackmailing everyone in the village, myself included, like the infamous Serafin Poudry. 
In this document is proof of every bribe paid by Hamilton to federal authorities in regard to acquisition of his damn mine. The fact that he has used his henchmen to instill terror within the village will not say sway the tribunals down in Montreal. But the fact that he has been bribing government officials surely will. I can already picture it make making the front page. The English are all, all the same. We will prevail. Okay. Uh, uh, writing with different ink. Hamilton is not only a crook, he's buddy, but a murderer. I do not believe he is in his remorse. I firmly believe he will pay for his crime. I do not believe in native magic, but I do believe in their vengeance. Vengeance. That's the last page. Okay. Important document. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right, so that's done. So I know there is on his property, there is a, oh, okay. He does have a cave. Uh, should we go to the cave right now or? I think we'll go, we'll go do the other houses and then we'll do the both caves after. I don't know why I'm doing it in that order, it's just I feel, I don't feel like, uh... Let's, uh, yeah, let's, uh... Actually, you know what, we'll, we'll go and do it. It only makes sense to... It would only make sense to do it. There is a... Cave is it that away? Oh, and it's broken down. So, Eastern Cavern. Yeah, so I can't really go down here, even if I wanted to. Dynamite. I can find dynamite. All right. So I guess we're we'll go back over here. That way is just gonna bring me back to the. Um, going to bring me back to the general store so let's go to the next house go 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 all right we're at the Bidal's house if I remember correctly I'm just going to check the mailbox which I'm going to have to do with all the other ones I forgot to after who am I oh number one okay all right so letter for for Marie, the sweet Marie, may the treasure hunt begin. I have hidden wonderful little things for you to all find all over the village. Following my clues, you are holding in your hands the first map. The hunt begins at my place. You are so clever. I'm certain you will find everything, Martin. Okay. So that's fun. At least now it makes sense. And I found number four and then five. Now I have to find... I have number one, so I have to find two and three after. Alright, we have arrived at Bidal's house. Seems to be two houses here. Oh, there's the garage. You will get out now. Let's see what's going on here. Alright, seems like a clean enough garage. Anything in particular here? No, no, no. A lot of drawers. Hardware is always good. Ah, there we go. Let the light be shone. shine. Never mind. A true Catholic always strives to keep okay. lowly temptations at bay. Oh, Obviously, not... Carl thought someone in this house was like someone a had a hide their upholding habits. Upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. An aging car was parked here. Carl could picture the notary's heavy sedan with a huge back seat large enough to fit the whole family. Makes sense. Plain bike tire. Okay. Oh, a gas can. Okay, I think I saw everything here. Right, let's go to the house now. Mm. 
Carl smiled at the sight of the nicely protected garden. Hopefully, the Bedards had managed to dig every last potato out before the sudden snowfall. All right, let's go in the front door. Oh, there's a garbage can here, though. And nothing. Carl was no burglar. He didn't need to resort to petty techniques, such as window breaking, to find his way in. A good detective simply looks for keys where gullible souls hide them. Did I not pick up the keys? I swear to God, I picked up keys. I did. Hmm, there must be keys for something else then. under the mat. Come on, go up the stairs. What are you doing? What was even the point of locking your door? If everyone hid their key in the same place? Carl was starting to feel like his investigator life lacked challenge. <laughs> the house smelled uh, like incense. The kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. Okay. God darn it. I don't have any wood to start the heat up. Billy D, potato. Enough food for a rough time. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. La Bible. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. That is kind of weird, actually. TV is on the other side. Yeah, make sense. Good Paul Six, appearing papal. <laughs> His crooked fingers gave the impression he was about to bestow a miracle. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Telephone, hello. No sound on the line. Okay. Oh yes, meat. We need meat. Alright. There's drawings here. I guess these are non-essential because I can't even pick them up. Is there another light? Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The phrase for toys was stupefying. <laughs> the family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. I guess the so. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine. As if minutes ago, someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. All right. So many kids room. All right, nothing there. Histoire. Oh, Mary's diary. I shouldn't be reading this. Jean-Luc Bédard had without a doubt been the closest man in the village to William Hamilton otherwise known as Uncle Willie. Mary's Diary, page 1, August 16th. I have a diary, just like Mom. Unlike her, though, I don't wear a long face when writing, but I do love to write my thoughts about Martin, most of all. I love talking about him. I think he loves me, too, just like in Romeo and Juliet. People don't like it when I see him, only because he's a bleh. But just like in this story, nothing can stand in the way of true, true love. Uh, August 18th, I lost appetite, I can't sleep anymore, every waking hour the instant shivers run through my body, dad's making me see Dr. Beaupré, with his big hands touching me everywhere, his foul breath exhaling all over my face, yeah. I'm not sick, I'm in love, I love Martin so much, there's nothing I like better than thinking about his, us playing together like we always do. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day, he was pretty sad when I did because... 
it's for his dad's garden shed and Martin had always been afraid of him. I think Martin's dad is in the is a bit like dad's god. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Poor Martin, he's cried like a baby, but I still love him. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. God damn it. There was a second page to that. Uh documents. Mary's diary. Alright, second page. August 24th. Mom often cries when she falls. Feels lonely. I think there's no reason for her to cry. Mom can be stupid sometimes. Dad works a lot because of the wealthy Englishman buying everything. That's what notaries do. They make sure that people can get what they're paying for, basically. It's complicated, but that's how Dad explained it to me. The rich guy doesn't look half as bad as Martin told me he was. When I saw him this morning at Dad's office, he told me, Call your me Uncle Willie. I found that pretty funny, plus he gave me candy. Okay, it was kind of old and dry, but still candy. I think Dad, I think Dad gets along with, well with Uncle Willie because when he's with him, he laughs the same way he does with Father La Labelle. Uh, I had I had to gobble up September 22nd. I had to gobble up Dr. Beaupré's horrible medicine because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have made it to Christmas or so he said. I haven't seen Martin in weeks nor did I go to school for that matter. Dad has been praying beside my bed every morning for a while now at the bedtime too. Today he went hunting with Uncle Willie. He told me to ask God to bless him and in my prayers. Okay, third page. I think this has to do with the medicine that only the richest of the rich can afford. Dad told me he'll be praying for Uncle Willie until the day he dies and I should do the same. God, Father Labelle, and now Uncle Willie. Wonder when Dad finds the time to pray for Santa Claus. All right. September 28th. How can mom be so stupid? She's getting fat too. She cries like a newborn puppy all the time. It's so annoying. I came across Martin today. He seemed pretty thin and maybe kind of dirty. Doesn't look as neat as presentable as Uncle Willie. That's for sure. All right. All right. That's a bit better. I'm gonna turn on the light in every room in the house. I already checked that actually. More drawings. Work for an art for future artists. Makes sense. Alright, last room. Probably the adult bedroom. Yes. Small room, indeed. Sylvie's diary. Alright, how many pages? The Bedards had vacated the premises. Carl gathered they would be of no help. August 14, 1970. Jean Luc never had a knack for mathematics. Try as he might, he'll never realize this, that he simply cannot be that. The father of the child I'm bearing, but how can I be sure? I, I, sh I have to keep this a secret, at least until the time it is right when it will be safe. August 16, Dr. Beaupré told me it would start showing soon that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Gotta muster courage, he said, with his usual condescending tone. Courage to face what's coming, but he doesn't get it. Doesn't get it all. For him, I just had some childish affair. He doesn't really realize I brought eternal damnation upon myself. Uh, September 14, Marie is very sick and Jean-Luc plunged into despair. I told him nothing about the evil growing inside me. Sometimes I get the feeling that he can see right through me. My Marie's suffering and I'm, I'm the one to blame. Oh Lord Almighty, why do children have to pay for their parents' sin? Uh, September 24th, Mary has recovered but there's something really gloomy about her now. She always seems so sad. Maybe she caught a glimpse of what dying is like. Okay, that's kind of weird. What if she's a happy child now because of me? Jean-Luc truly honored me two nights ago. If the baby makes it, maybe Dr. Bopley could convince him it was born prematurely. It might only be the way out. October 11th, we're headed to Lac Saint-Jean tomorrow. Visit Jean-Luc's mother. I need to. The situation is un un unintendable now. We fear the worst. All right. Alrighty. Uh, Dreamcatchers. Dreamcatchers originated from First Nations legends. They were used to trap nightmares. Mm hmm. That's it. That's all there is. There's pictures too. Can't click on them. Okay, I think we did pretty much everything here. Okay, she did say the kid dropped something close to 
somewhere here, right? Did it appear on the map? No. Crevice. I'm assuming this is a... Uh... To let me... Mm, documents. Maria's diary. Uh... Just looking, she said the kid dropped something somewhere. Okay, um, uh, he's a bleh. Okay, uh, uh, I wonder if he found the key he lost the other day. It was pretty sad when I did because it's for his dad's garden shed, and Martin has always been afraid of him. It says, uh, nah. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Okay. So we're gonna need that later. Burrow next to the shed at the Bless house. So keep that in mind. Hopefully I'll remember it later. Okay. For now, I seem like I did pretty much all the necessities here. I'll go around the house once to make sure if my guy keeps going faster here. Okay. A lot of wood around this guy's house. Alright, nothing here. So let's uh, keep going back in the truck and now we're going to Ahua's house. Alright, we're at the next house. Oh, that's not it. Just gonna check the mailbox again. Letter from, letter from for Wilfred. Dear Mr. Roy, I'm writing you because I feel guilty. The other day, Martin and I were taking a stroll not far from your house and we saw that the door to your shed was open. I wanted us to mind our own business, but Martin liked living on the edge. He took a few shiny things, including some bullets. Now my dad always told me never to play with those things, but I immediately put them back. But Martin had hid the other things. I confess, Mar Mr. Roy, I had no... Ma I have so many regrets, but I must, mustn't must call the police. You won't call them, will you? My father would be so angry. I'll bring back all those things, I promise. Mary Beda. Alright. Oh, are we, look, are we talking about a rifle here? Alright, let's keep going here. Alright, we are here. So there's supposed to be a shed, she said her the letter and the entrance said the uh, door to her, his shed was open. I always like looking at the shed before, I don't know why, but there's a letter on the door. I think I already checked it. There's no shed here, unless it's completely in the back. Alright, I don't... Oh, there is wolf tracks though. We'll go. We'll do that after. A little doggy door with a curtain in front, eh? Okay. Uh, note from Jean Roy. We fled. It's going to. It's getting too dangerous. More people live. More people live in North, and it will be safer there. Jean Roy. Okay. It was a classic Canadian house except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. Right, so that still doesn't work. Nothing in here. Just one more move and White is checkmated. Game over. <laughs> it seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. Ooh, that seems like a long letter. The fantasy, page one. 
My theory I didn't, I didn't enter this curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones, and taking the life of a flesh and bone individual who, who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate, read, held the promise of exhilarating cessation and like Rus Ruskolnikov. It wasn't about ex axing old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory. Not all. Matthew just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple, horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind. Like most people, he desired Rand quite wildly, so he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He po pondered using a rifle or a knife, assassinating a young girl or an old man. He tried to focus on practical ability. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bo bodybuilding wasn't exactly Matthew's strong suit. He was. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He was, wasn't that eager to learn what spending the rest of his life in the prison would be like. Some experience scary, just to, well, worth it. Okay, there's only one, one page. Gosh darn it! Okay, nothing important here. All good here. Matches. We're all good here. Okay, we're all good here. Good here, good here, good here. Stupid door, you're in the way. No! Nothing of importance here. There's a door here, it might be the cellar. No. Nope. Pantry. Let's keep going. Oh, a nice little picture. The photograph was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. The couple seemed to be very good friends. All right. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. Okay. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. Makes sense. All right. Mm, painkiller. Nothing of importance here. Novel page three. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm not gonna read all this novel here because it's getting way too long to read. Page four. Oh, three or three ammo box. Oh, look at that! Another. Not gun, a right? single weapon was left. All of them were gone. Is that supposed to be a surprise or? Come on, old faithful somewhere. All right, I'm not going to read uh, all that. Cigarettes. Seemed like they were in a rush to leave here. All manners of clothing were gone, as if the Rois drove out of town with their closet in tow. Canopoly. Canopoly, you win if you pass go. Okay. There must be a shed somewhere here. Alright, so we got the tracks here. Uh, let's, uh... So where does this lead us exactly? Okay, uh... In an area we never went, so... Let's go! Hopefully we'll find something good! Hello, fellas! Carl never thought he would be dancing with the wolves. 
Is there anyone gone? Yes. One talisman. Okay. Oh, there's the shed. Alright. Beer, beer, beer. Matches. Always good. Let's open this uh, this thing up here. All right, the heat my my heat does. I don't have to worry about it that much anymore. With that coat. All right, let's. Hello. Anybody in here? Polaroids. Fire starter. Nothing in here. Magnet. No. No. More bullets. Flare gun. That's disappointing. Alright, the rifle uh, apparently is not in here. So I need... Uh, what was it? So let's go, uh, I'll go back to the house. And we're gonna go to Blaise's house because the, the kid said he dropped the key to the shed, which is the shed I could not open. So let's go back there, I'll find the key in the crevice or whatever. Alright, we're back at the Blaise's house. I checked the mailbox real quick, there wasn't anything in the mailbox itself, so... The key should be for the shed should be in a crevice, not too far. Beside the shed. There you go. A key? What could it be for? The garden shed? Carl couldn't reach it with his arm alone. But he had more than a few tricks up his sleeve to pick it up. We already got it. <laughs> All right, fire starter. The chainsaw doesn't work. Of course it doesn't. Another gas thing. Hardware. Where the fuck that is. Tools, tools. Is there a flare gun in here or something? Well, there has to be something in the... Come on, I didn't come all this way just for nothing. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this part of Conan. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm very disappointed. I thought in this shed in front of me was going to be a rifle I'm, I've been picking up fucking ammo for for a bit. I know there is one. I have saw s screenshots about it. Sorry about that. Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. A lot of reading this time. Hopefully you're not too mad I didn't read all the novel, there was so much reading for that and I didn't find pertinent right now. If I need to read it, I'll go back to it later. Well, if you enjoyed, of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel, we really appreciate that. Of course, follow me everywhere, MeTimeGamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and right here, youtube.com forward slash MeTimeGamer, where I post a new video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Keep on keeping on.